We will call to order uh, this committee, this meeting of the General Laws Committee. I think we have a quorum. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Here, Senate Bill 554, Senate Bill 556, and Senate Bill 565. And um, how many people? One. How many people do we have video recording today? Video recorders. Do you? Did you fill out a little yellow form? I'll get one right now. Stand up and introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Cameron with Progress Missouri. And so you all notice how he's not using a tripod. He's using something that makes it stable but doesn't take up more room. Than an individual sit. Hold that up and show everybody as a good demonstration. You're like the you're like the golden haired boy of the community <laughs> room today because you're the smartest reporter I've met in a long time. Okay, so um, everybody see that that it doesn't take up extra space and that it doesn't uh, block anybody else's view. And does it, does that hold your camera relatively stable? Yeah, I just have to keep a hand to stabilize. 2014 it. technology is beautiful. <laughs> Funny how we don't have to take up. Space and have video. All right, um, Senator Cunningham, I believe you have Senate Bill 554. Correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members, sharing my bill today. I appreciate you taking time to do it. I was a little bit worried when I came down the steps and seen all those people out in the hallway. Thank goodness they're not here for this bill. Well, they were here to talk to Senator Nasheed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Always <laughs> draws a crowd. The rich and famous senator you're talking about? Oh. Okay. Senate Bill 554. I uh, guess I'm showing my age a little bit with this bill, but as I've matured, I've uh, grown a great deal of respect for history, heritage, and tradition, and serving in the Senate has done nothing but enhance that uh, respect for tradition. And for the reasons above, I'm here today with this simple one paragraph bill that requires traditional holiday names be used if you receive public funds, schools, state agencies, etc., like that. Uh, it's always amazed me that like on Jay Leno they had the man on the street spot and he would stop people and say, uh, what is Independence Day? And people wouldn't know what it was. You know? And that part just kind of bothered me and that's true with a lot of different bills. So I've introduced this bill in the House. I introduced it four or five times. We always pass it with 150 votes or so. It would be uh, come out of there with help from both sides of the aisle and then we get to the Senate and one particular senator who no longer serves there. I would always block it, claiming it's a war on Christmas, Bill, and we don't need a war. There's not a war on Christmas. This bill's more than a war on Christmas, Bill. It's not, not about that. It's, it's kind of a war against traditional holiday names and respect to those holidays. And, and I think Christmas is, is a day that we honor because it is Christmas. Uh, we don't have a winter holiday day, as some people want to, want to say. Uh, it does bother me that uh, Martin Luther King Day now is called MLK Day. And I think we need to show respect for that. I think Labor Day is important uh, because of the sacrifice and commitment made by labor. And I think it ought to be called Labor Day. I don't know what all names they can attach to it. Same thing goes with Thanksgiving. It's not Turkey Day, it's Thanksgiving. And, and it's not just the day before the great holiday of Black Friday. It is actually a part of our heritage and tradition. And so that's what this bill is all about. And it's short, simple. I'll be glad to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Thank you. Um, do we have questions for the sponsor? None. Did you have any witnesses? No, I did not. I did call not. by name. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the bill? Anyone to speak in favor? Anyone to speak against the bill? Anyone speaking in opposition? Anyone speaking for informational purposes only? Informational purposes only. Senator, there are six million people in the state of Missouri, and no one wanted to speak for or against or for information. It's great, isn't it? I love it. I, I would think that that means this will just fly right through. I would hope so, and it does. It, I mean, I think there's 13 different holidays there, and I tried to incorporate any holidays that I could into it. If the committee seemed one that I didn't, I missed something, uh, I'm open to being amended, but I think it pretty well covers all those. Thank you all for taking time to hear it, and appreciate the short hearing. Valentine's Day. Do you have a question? Yeah, that was <laughs> Very good. That'll... Call the hearing on Senate Bill 554. <coughs> Thank you, Senator. Thank you. 
believe we have a quorum now. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and call the roll. Chairman Nieves? Here. Vice Chairman Shaw? Here. Senator Slybla? Here. Romine? Sylvie? Holzman? Nishi? Here. All right, Mayor Quorum, we will proceed. Um, next is going to be Senate Bill 556, offered by Senator Nashi. Senator? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. For the record, I am Senator Jamila Nashi, representing the 5th Senatorial District. And I come before you today to seek your support for Senate Bill 556. I will give you the summary of the bill. Uh, this act includes provisions related to reporting uh, requirements for loss or theft firearms uh, and expungement of criminal records, along with a, a pilot program, which is a gun buyback pilot program. The um, Reporting of stolen firearms. Basically, this bill requires firearm owners to report the loss or uh, theft of um, firearms within 24 hours to local law enforcement agencies. Failure to do so uh, will result in a fine punishable of $1,000. And it will also um, cause that individual to have a class A misdemeanor. If the person has a conceal and carry permit and fails to immediately pay any fines ordered, uh, ordered by uh, the courts, uh, then th that individual will lose uh, his or her um, permit, uh, gun permit for a year. So that is the uh, gist of the uh, lost and stolen firearm provision. Uh, the uh, expungement under the under the law, a person may petition for an expungement of records related to certain criminal offenses by filing a petition uh, with the courts uh, in person. Uh, if a person was found guilty uh, with DWIs, they cannot, you know, go and get their records expunged. And the reason that I decided to put the expungement provision inside was simply because. It was a gentleman came to me uh, approximately a year ago, and he said that he had caught a felony charge during the time that he was a teen. And for a long time, uh, he wasn't able to carry, he, right now he's not able to carry a firearm, or he's not uh, able to go hunting. And so he asked me if I could do something about it. And, you know, he said, look, I have to put food on the table. I love hunting, and the fact that I got caught uh, with the felony charge of stealing back in the days when I was only um, uh, a teen is it, not fair. So try to help me. And so that's why I brought forth this provision to expunge criminal records of nonviolent offenders uh, so that those individuals can begin to carry firearms if, if need be. The, uh, the other one would be the uh, buyback program. So the buyback program established a uh, firearm recover, recovery pilot program under this uh, particular program, uh, the um, Department of Public Safety will implement uh, the program and the grants will go uh, to the uh, Department of Public Safety and the Department of Public Safety would then allow for local municipalities to uh, have the buyback program implemented in their particular municipality or, or city or county. Uh, when individuals bring the guns back, uh, they would be able to get a certificate, uh, a certificate, a grocery um, certificate, grocery store certificate, where, which means that they can go and uh, purchase food if they bring in a gun that probably was sitting around the house and that was drawing dust. A lot of times you have individuals that they have those guns and they've had those guns for many years, but they just sit around the house and they draw dust and uh, they don't have, they don't know what to do with it. Uh, and so if we would allow for this program to exist, then many individuals can come and get rid of the guns that they don't want anymore. 
this uh, buyback program would also, I think it would help with um, suicide, uh, gun suicide, the gun suicide rate uh, throughout the throughout the, uh, the nation is rising drastically. Uh, studies have shown when individuals, uh, especially women, get depressed and they have guns in their possession at home, then they're more likely to commit suicide. And we're not talking about uh, the accidental suicides that exist as well. Uh, we have so many accidental suicides with young young kids, especially with those individuals that own guns and those individuals are not, you know, uh, properly uh, securing their guns. They go out, I mean, the kids go find the guns in the homes and, and, and they turn around and, and do some, something drastic to themselves. So we just want to try to get more of those guns out of the homes, especially the ones that's not doing the hunting. Get them out of the homes of those individuals. Uh, and we think that that will make for a better um, uh, public safety uh, program the gun buyback. Now, we're not uh, saying that the gun buyback would reduce crime. There's no studies out there that states that it would reduce crime. But uh, I truly believe at the end of the day, it would reduce the uh, suicide rate uh, here in, in the state of Missouri. With that, I'll, I'll take you. Do we have questions for the sponsor? I have a couple for you. Um, so we'll just kind of walk through this. I know that I, I think, or I think, you would probably be willing to, you know, talk about some of the provisions in here. I mean, you're probably like most senators where you're not married to the exact language of the bill. Right, absolutely. So, so if we start at the very beginning where it says, any owner of a firearm who knows or should know, um, what does or should not? I'm just wondering how in the world we would ever define or even prosecute should not. Well, they know that the gun is not there, right? They know that you know that their son. They they may have, they may have a son that that probably decided to take the gun and they didn't and they didn't report it. Okay, and they know. Right. So or, or they should and know. they should know that the gun is not in their possession anymore. Right. Right. But how, I mean, how do you prove that? Is what I'm because I'm thinking that the bill would probably be just as good, or at least as good towards your intent, if it just said any owner of a firearm who knows, and then just leave off the part of or should know. Because I, I mean, I think it's it's a pretty high standard to be able to say to somebody, or to be able to prove in court that they should have known. Well, you you have to be a responsible a gun a gun owner, right? And so you should know when your gun is not in, the possess in your possession or where you put it when you last saw it, right? Well, it depends on how many guns you have. <laughs> well, this is, like, again, like, like I said, this is not really for the, uh, the rural areas. I mean, we're talking about the inner cities and the difference. I mean, we have a really, really major difference uh, and, uh, in terms of how we deal with guns in the inner city versus how we deal with guns and in the uh, urban, I mean, in the uh, rural areas. So this basically will impact uh, the inner cities in which I live in. A lot of people, uh, they, they, they tend to neglect uh, their duties in terms of uh, making sure that the guns are safe and things of that sort. So, so do you see what's, what's kind of hanging me up? Yeah, I do, and uh, we, can, we can clean that up. We can clean the language up. With it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. So, so we can look at the possibility of bracketing out the should know. Um, and then the, the next bill that we're going to hear from you, I, I'm getting, I think I'm getting the two bills mixed together in my, because they're very similar, right? The two yes. Bills. And so does the next one talk about loss or stolen? Yeah, that's the next one. And then that, that's just a standalone bill. Right, but, but this one talks about if it's lost or stolen. Does the other one also talk about lost or stolen? Yeah, and you and I, we, we, we talked about that uh, last week. Because we might be able to work together on that. Cause yes. Because I'll tell you what, you know, you mentioned that different areas are different, right? And so, so the idea of lost, prosecuting <coughs> because they lost a gun, that might it is be negligence. 
that might give, yeah, but we don't, we don't prosecute people for losing chainsaws or... But guns are the ones that's killing people the most, y'all. <laughs> Not the chainsaws. Well, so, so I'm just trying to remember because when you and I were talking about this, I don't remember whether we were talking about this bill or the next one. No, it's the next one. And basically what, what you want to do is basically, well, you suggested that we take out um Because we can, if it's, if it's the next one, then we'll talk about that. Yeah. One. Okay. So, well, yeah, but I would, I would want to take lost out of this one, too. Yeah, I, I, I know it. So would you be okay with that? I mean, I'm open for compromise. You're, you're, you're an open-minded senator? Yes, absolutely. All right. So I'm going to, I'm just kind of marking mine up here yeah. so that we can, so we can talk about it later. Because um, um, I'm thinking if we, if we just leave the provision that says they have to report it if it's stolen, because that's the bigger problem, I would think, isn't it? Yes, and, and, and another thing, we may have a, a committee substitute because when it's stolen, we also want to report the make and the model of the gun as well. If you don't, you know, if you guys don't have a problem with that, I think that the make and the model, um, reporting the make and the model uh, of the gun is something that uh, will, will go a long way in terms of helping um, solve problems, you know, crimes, and things of that sort when the police officers find those guns. Um, right. Or the serial number. Yeah, as well as the serial number. Right? A lot of people don't know the serial numbers on it. Do you know yours? Um, okay, so then on page two, this is really just more out of curiosity, where it talks about only any felony or misdemeanor offense uh, not involving the use or possession of a weapon. But then it also says, except that any felony committed by a commercial driver's, driver's license holder. What's, why is that there? Well, that's a, a piece of language uh, that uh, the uh, research thought should be in there because a lot of the uh, individuals with felony charges, they, they don't have their records expunged and they don't think that those individuals should have their records expunged. I mean, it kind of seems like we're singling them out a little bit. Um, well, we're, we're singling out uh, DWIs as well, individuals with DWIs as well. But, you know, I, I'm, again, I'm open to um, whatever uh, compromises so you're kind of, they have. So you're kind of being like me where you're willing to be Gumby, right? Kind of like how I'm, I've been willing to be I just think that, we, you, know, we need to, you know, we need to do something to try to reduce crime. And uh, we've heard bills, uh, we heard your bill yesterday, and it really didn't go a long way. And I'm not... You know, I'm sorry, but I have to say that I know that your my bill is in your in your possession right now. But your bill didn't go a long way, and uh, in terms of uh, reducing uh, violent crimes and gun crimes uh, here in the state of Missouri, and I think this bill will do just what I'm looking for it to do, and that's to help reduce uh, gun violence uh, in the state of Missouri. Okay. Um. I also noticed that, tr so truck drivers, well, I, I think of people with commercial driver's licenses as truck drivers, um, but then the other people that we single out are prostitutes. No, prostitutes can get expunged. I know, but <laughs> why are we- Nonviolent, anything, that, anything that's nonviolent with the exception of uh, the, um, um, the um, drivers, road drivers. So was there a worry that some people would think prostitution was a violent? Yeah. Alright, that's all the questions I have. Anybody else have questions for the sponsor? Senator Levin. Isn't there already buyback programs in, in your area? Well, what happened last year was a bill that was passed that would allow for uh, the uh, municipalities to uh, create an ordinance in order to do a buyback program. So, like, take for instance the city of St. Louis, if they wanted to do a buyback program, then they, they would have to create an ordinance. But basically, what this bill would do is it, it would this bill would allow for a grant to be in place for the buyback program. I see. And, and, and the grant would um, be. Um, administered by the Department of Public Safety. On page 6, uh, line 20 there, you're talking about the Firearm Recovery Fund. 
Well, I think uh, $300,000 yes, would be like to see it. deposit as a state treasurer. Uh, don't, don't you think that uh, maybe some questions would be asked St. Louis area, grocery stores, people like that might be want to get involved and maybe give them some of certificates. Oh, absolutely. We can, like add, we can ask them to match the $300,000. But that's not going on right now? No. Or, no. Okay. Other questions? Senator Shaw. Regarding the buyback. What's the purpose of the buyback? I mean, just in a few words. You know, again, um, it's really not to reduce crime because studies have shown that the buyback program does, does nothing to reduce crime. However, <laughs> when you have uh, guns that are just laying around the house, okay, uh, and they're just, you know, drawing dust, individuals don't really know what to do, what to do with them in terms of getting rid of them. Those individuals can go and they can, you know, um, take that gun uh, to the, their local police uh, station and, and, and in return get a certificate, a uh, grocery store car certificate. But what, but what I think would happen if we were able to get those guns out of those homes, uh, and if you can look this up because this is, I mean, it's out there. Uh, when you have guns in the homes, um, when people are depressed, they're more likely to grab those guns and commit suicide. <laughs> So the suicide rate among uh, gun owners is, is, is rising, okay? And not only that, you have incidental, uh, uh, accidental deaths with, with young folks. You have individuals that didn't do what we did. See, I went and I, and I took eight hours, uh, and I know how to secure an, uh, my gun and make sure that it's safe. Many individuals out there with guns who probably purchased those guns from private owners, they don't know how to, you know, to, uh, to, to make sure that the safety locks, you know, is there. And many of them don't want the safety locks on because they want to be able to get to the gun if someone comes into their homes. Okay? So you have these gun, you have guns out there now where it's e the easy, it's, make, this, it's easy access to young folks because they know the mother just per put the gun under her pillow. So or the gun, just, they just put the gun under the mattress. So what I'm hearing you say is that that it's not to reduce crime, it's to stop or it's to reduce the risk of suicide and accidental death and to provide uh, people an opportunity to get rid of their unused gun because they don't, they don't want them. Yeah. Right. Okay, so do you have any data or is there any data to support the idea that gun buyback programs reduce suicide or accidental death? Oh yeah, it's out there and I can get that information to you. Okay. I don't have it with me right now, but it's out there. Okay, and, and as I'll tell you one, uh, uh, if you go on your Google right now, uh, uh, Australia, they did a massive gun by that, and that's a whole other country. But then, but, but hold on, in Australia, the crime rate went up, though. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, it did. Not after the gun buyback, but after the gun buyback, the suicide, the murder rate went down. Now, we're not talking about crime. Well, we're so, talking about the murder rate. So if the crime rate doesn't go down, why would you think that the suicide rate or the accidental rate would go down? Because those individuals who who commit crimes, violent crimes, they're not turning in their guns. Okay, they're they're going to keep their guns. That's why the crime rate won't go down. Well, but with those individuals who who may have guns in their homes and, and they they probably didn't get the proper uh, uh, safety mechanisms. Uh, the safety uh, skills that's needed in order to make sure that those guns are safe. Those individuals, nine times out of ten, may have a kid that 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 knows that mom put the gun up under the pillow because she's she's not trying to make sure it's safe because she want to get to it. Okay, if someone comes in her home, and then that kid then in turn pick up that gun and put it in his mouth and shoot his brains off. That's the difference. Okay, so what happens to the guns after they get bought? <coughs> Well, after the guns are um, brought back, then it, we can we basically allow for uh, the uh, conservation department of conservation to purchase. I mean, take those guns. And what do they do with them? They don't melt them down. I don't know. I don't know what they do with them. Do you think it's the place of government to to buy back people's guns from them? Yes. 
expect, especially when you have if, if, if individuals decide that they don't want them. Okay, Other questions for the sponsor? You know, I just noticed something that I'm sure is an accident, but do you know what you know what the most common caliber of an AR-15 is? No. You probably wouldn't have. You probably would have held this bill like by one spot because the bill number is five five six, which <laughs> is the caliber of an AR-15. Wow. I, I know that you don't like AR-15s, do you? No, not really. All right, any other questions for the sponsor? I love that movie. I mean, I do have a 380, so okay. All right, well, that will call the hearing on 556. Five, five, um, all right. This so, is not 666. Six, six. Indeed. Okay, are you ready to present Senate Bill 565? Five? It's the same, yes. Um, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, again, thanks for giving me the opportunity to come before you to present 565. Uh, this bill uh, basically does the same thing that the other bill uh, does, and that is to um, report lost, uh, lost and stolen firearms. And I just mentioned, mentioned that to you. No difference. It's just a standalone bill in case something happens to this particular bill. You know what, Senator? I apologize. You know what we forgot to do? Roll we, call. We didn't call for any um, anybody that wanted to speak in support of your bill. There might be people here that want to speak in support of you. Are there people that want to speak in support of 556? <laughs> Opposition? Informational purposes only? Yes. Very good. Okay, Senator, go ahead and proceed. Yeah, again, I, I, I'll repeat, uh, this is the same language that's uh, in the bill that I just presented, and it deals with uh, reporting of lost and, and, and stolen firearms. With that, I'll take any questions. So, I think I like this one better because it's short. Okay. All right, so let's just kind of walk through this a little bit. So is this one that, you, that you're preparing the Senate Committee substitute for? Yes. As well? So in that substitute, will you be taking out the or should know and the loss? Correct. And we will also um, report the make, model, and the serial number. Well, hold on. What if a person doesn't know the serial number? Well, I mean, they don't know the serial number. So what I'm thinking is we probably don't want to put in law something that a lot of people wouldn't know. They may not know the making model. Yeah, so we might want well to leave that out. <laughs> well, I mean, but for those <laughs> no, no, but for those that know the making the model, then it's optional. Just put may. Just put may other than shall. Okay. All right. So. for the sponsor well I'm gonna I'm gonna bracket out some of this stuff and then ask her if she's okay with what I'm bracketing so does anybody have questions for her while I do that Senator will you bear with me for just a minute I'm gonna I'm gonna bracket a few things out and then read it to you and see if you're gonna be okay with that. I need you to get your attorney to read it to me. No no it's so I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I know, I know that you're not at this committee very often, but uh, 
I'm just going to We do have some basic rules in the committee, like when you want to ask somebody a question, you kind of. You did. You said, do any senators want to talk to the senator? I took you up on it. <laughs> you were preoccupied. All right, so just to kind of give you a flavor, what I'm, what I'm thinking maybe it could read like would be this. Any owner of a firearm who knows that the firearm has been stolen, 